In London, a psychic detective races against his precognition about the brutal murders of Jack the Ripper when he stumbles upon the secrets of the royal family. In Whitechapel's impoverished streets, Kate orders her co-hustler, Mary Kelly, to follow a man in a dark alley. On her way, Geordie and McQueen from the Nichols gang stop Mary and threaten her to pay their dues tomorrow. The following day, the six wanton women wash themselves outside the church when their old friend, Anne, who married a wealthy painter, asks Mary to look after her baby Alice. However, Mary refuses since she must work harder to pay the gang. Generously, Anne tells them she'll ask her wealthy husband for money to pay her old friend's debt for the week. Mary doesn't want to take the risk, but the former hustler insists. Meanwhile, Ben Kidney holds the coachman Netley at knife point, urging him to cooperate. While Anne has an intimate moment with her husband Albert, Kidney's men barge into the room and take the couple away. Martha and Mary witness their friend's abduction as they shush Alice's cries. In a dungeon, Kidney interrogates Anne but she denies knowing about his accusations. That night, Mary decides to bring the baby to Anne's parents and part ways with Martha, who goes to work. Shortly after, a suspicious man follows Martha and pulls her into the dark, where he takes her life. Elsewhere, an intoxicated inspector, Frederick Aberline, suddenly envisions a murder in an impoverished alley of Jewish people. Then, Sergeant Peter Godley of the Whitechapel Police barges into the brothel and slaps the inspector to his senses. Soon after, Aberline washes his face to sober up, wondering why Godly fetched him in the middle of the night. Aware of his talented comrade's visions, the sergeant asks about his precognition where Aberline details an image of a bloodied petticoat. Hearing this, Godly informs the detective about a bizarre murder, like the inspector's description. At the morgue, Godly introduces Aberline to Martha's corpse, but the inspector claims she's not the one he envisioned. Then, the chief shows the woman's crotch, which the killer removed. The following day at the hospital, a royal physician, Sir William Gull, leads his colleagues to observe Dr. Farrell's new treatment for for insanity. At the demonstration, an unconscious Anne is strapped onto a bed as Dr. Farrell's neurosurgical procedure begins. The observers believe the woman's delusions will end, unaware of the objective to silence the state prisoner. In a pub, Mary and her friends blame Albert for Anne's disappearance. Polly worries for their lives as they've heard about Martha's death, suspecting the notorious gang's doing. Without Anne's help, Kate urges her friends to work the streets harder to survive. After Polly finishes work, Jordy corners her and threatens to gouge out her eye. Fortunately, a constable interrupts them, forcing the vicious man to leave. Annie and Liz console Polly, shaken by the nickels. Liz kisses her friend, but Polly pushes her away and calls her a pig. Enraged, Liz leaves her alone in the dangerous streets. In a carriage, Polly muses over an ancient obelisk while eating a grape. Suddenly, her wealthy customer slits her throat, killing her instantly. Afterward, the stranger removes the woman's privates before leaving her on the desolate streets. The following day at the crime scene, Aberline reports the murder happened elsewhere due to the absence of sprayed blood from the cut throat. He notices her dry clothes despite the night's rain, confirming the murder happened in a carriage. Aberline mentions there must be more than one suspect according to his visions. The sergeant suspects the gang, while the detective finds a grape stem beneath Polly's dress. Confused, Aberline brushes his finger against Polly's lips and smells it, noticing another odor. At the morgue, a mortician faints after seeing Polly's butchered privates. Aberline deduces Martha and Polly's killers are different people. One is savage, while the latter is meticulous. Then, the detective Detective requests the mortician to report what organ was taken from the corpse, unsettling the man. Afterward, Aberline orders the police to interview every district veterinarian, butcher, and furrier to track their rigorous killer who disemboweled his victim. Soon after, Aberline reports the crime to his superior, Sir Charles Warren, who blames other races for the brutal crime. Contrary to the prejudiced bureaucrat, Aberline believes a doctor is the killer, but Warren disagrees. The detective supports that a peasant cannot afford grapes, insinuating a rich professional dissector is is a suspect. Regardless, the bigoted man remains indifferent to the peasant's death, so he urges Aberline to close the case soon, no matter his strange ways. At home, the investigator fixes himself an opium drink called laudanum, making him reminisce about the moment his deceased wife informed him about her pregnancy. The sergeant and detective later attend Polly's funeral, where her four remaining friends grieve. Unexpectedly, the makeshift coffin drops, revealing the corpse's face, unsettling the mourners. Shortly after, Godley and Aberline introduce themselves, but the distressed women dismiss the useless lawmen who couldn't ensure their safety. Mary says to investigate the Nichols gang, but Aberline challenges her to testify. Cramped in a small room, Annie worries about their insufficient earnings. Then, she confirms Anne's neat-looking kidnappers from Mary, assuming they were officials rather than thugs. Annie suggests selling their testaments about Anne's disappearance to the newspapers which thrive from political controversies. However, Mary thinks it's reckless and insists on seeking help from the investigator. Suddenly, the inn's owner barges into 
inside, finding four people instead of one, which they only paid for. The man hits Annie with a pan and throws the women back into the dangerous streets. Elsewhere, an unknown man savors his dinner and prepares a laudanum lace drink with his dissecting kit. Then, he leaves his room and into the streets for his next victim. Shortly after, Netley stops the carriage beside a wounded Annie, claiming his master likes her. The woman scoffs at the coachman's flattering remarks, so he lures her inside with grapes. Enticed by the gentleman's wealth, Annie eagerly finishes the fruit and drinks the drug vial in the carriage. Arriving at their destination, Netley leads the insensible woman into a desolate alley, where Annie meets her demise under the hands of the meticulous killer. The following day, Aberline examines the crime scene of the disemboweled woman when he derives a sign from the pennies on the ground. Godly informs him that the constables found leather on the corpse's mouth, suggesting the killer is a butcher. Doubtful, the inspector reveals he saw Annie from his visions last night. Then, Aberline finds a grape stem and smells the woman's mouth. Since grapes signify eliteness, the fruit lures the peasant women to their demise. The investigator concludes the murders were rituals since the two recent murders were similar. Afterward, Aberline places a coin on each eye of the corpse, believing the dead Christian can now pay the ferryman of the underworld to deliver her soul. At Warren's office, Aberline requests permission to consult a surgeon to aid his investigation, but the bureaucrat declines. Nevertheless, Aberline visits the hospital, where a doctor showcases a severely deformed man to an audience of physicians. In a gathering, the inspector introduces himself to Dr. Farrell and asks his expertise to the murderers, known as the Ripper case. However, the surgeon suggests pursuing foreigners of their land instead of reputable people. Then, William interrupts the displaced inspector and leads him to a surgeon's hall. He reveals that he's a retired surgeon, so he volunteers to answer Aberline's queries. Delighted by the help, Aberline asks him to identify the knife he saw in his vision. William confirms it's a Liston knife used for quick amputations. Then, the physician asks to see the police surgeon's report, which the investigator shows. As William examines the report, Aberline explains that the killer first cuts the victim's throat to prevent them from screaming. Beforehand, the killer would offer them grapes and a laudanum lace drink to incapacitate the victim. William asks how the investigator realized with his findings, so Aberline reveals he smelled the corpse's lips. Then, the retired surgeon says doctors and addicts are the ones who recognize laudanum, suspecting Aberline of opium addiction. Afterward, the doctor provides a prescription to the inspector. Furthermore, William suggests the suspect carries an amputation kit, and affirms Aberline's speculation that the Ripper is a well-educated man of human anatomy. At Buckingham Palace, William, the royal physician, assures Queen Victoria's worries about her grandson's illness. Concurrently, Aberline orders the police to strictly patrol a suspected target area of the Ripper and stop anyone suspicious, regardless of their social standing. That night, the troubled coachman expresses his worries to his master while the unnamed Ripper consoles him about their sacrifices. Meanwhile, Godly captures Mary from an alley and into a carriage. Inside, Aberline confronts the woman about the dangerous streets she continuously wanders. Then, Mary swears to testify against McQueen in exchange for their safety, but the inspector refuses, saying the gangster's men will take revenge. In a pub, Aberline treats Mary to a meal which she heartfully devours. The investigator assures the woman she'll be a great mother someday, claiming his visions are real. Then, he urges Mary to think carefully about strange incidents happening to her friends. Shortly after, Aberline reports to the sergeant about Mary's statement about Anne's disappearance, accusing Kidney, a member of the special branch of police. Suspicious, the inspector reveals Anne's parents and daughters are already missing. Regardless of the sergeant's warning, Aberline goes to the special branch's quarters. Aberline pretends to have an appointment with Mr. Kidney and threatens the suspicious deskman about disobeying his master's order. Afterward, the inspector enters a private room, where he finds Anne Crook's files. Meanwhile, Godly, Aberline's lookout, sees the suspected man return to the building. Then, the inspector hears the sergeant faking a protest and exploding a barrel outside the building, alarming the bureaucrats. Amidst the commotion, Aberline quietly exits the building while Kidney rushes inside upon hearing about an unwelcomed guest. Aberline learns that Anne is in a mental institution for women, which he visits with Mary, who insists on seeing her friend. Shortly after, the two find Anne inside an isolated cell, acknowledged as a state prisoner. The inspector tries to ask the unhinged woman questions about her husband, but Anne mindlessly regards Albert as her prince. Later, Aberline learns from his companion that Anne and Arthur were married in a Catholic church. Then, he promises to help retrieve Alice, asking for Mary's trust. Moved by the inspector, Mary asks if he has children, so Aberline reveals his wife died from childbirth. Then, he invites the woman to a gallery, where they meet discriminating stairs. Aberline shows her a painting of Prince Albert, who Mary recognizes as Anne's husband. Soon after, the inspector forces his way into William's house, but Farrell stops him since the physician is ill. Nevertheless, William sees Aberline, who 
reports his findings about the prince's affair. However, the royal physician disagrees that Albert is Jack the Ripper, a nickname for Whitechapel's killer. Disregarding the risks, William reveals the prince has syphilis, a sexually transmitted infection. Aberline deduces Albert punishes the woman for his condition, but the physician disagrees since the patient's hands tremble and knows nothing about human anatomy. In an underground chamber, a fraternity called Freemason holds an initiation, welcoming their recruit, Dr. Farrell. Meanwhile, many fans pretend to be Jack the Ripper, but Aberline ignores them. Godly notices the inspector has taken a liking to Mary and warns him. Aberline orders the sergeant to arrest the Nichols gang when a postman barges inside. He delivers a piece of meat in a tin with a letter claiming it to be the victim's kidney. In a pub, Mary discloses Albert's identity to Kate when Liz joins them with a young woman named Ada. Liz makes out with Ada, but Kate stops her before they get unwanted attention. Then, Aberline fetches Mary, who happily comes with him outside. The inspector informs her about the Nichols' temporary arrest to relieve her worries. In the meantime, Aberline asks Mary and her friends to stay off the streets until the case finishes and gives the woman money to get by. Then, he asks her to retrieve his letter from a barkeep after three days. Affectionately, Mary wishes Aberline to live with her in her quiet hometown and leans to kiss him. But the troubled man stops her. Furious about his rejection, Mary turns away when Aberline surrenders and reciprocates her feelings. Suddenly, a constable stops the two lovers but apologizes when he recognizes the esteemed inspector. Following Aberline's judgment, Mary and her friends stay in a room. When Ada refuses intimacy with Liz, the assertive woman storms out regardless of her friend's concern. Meanwhile, the inspector learns Kidney is a former grenadier guard, a senior infantry regiment who assisted field surgeons. However, Godly scoffs at his comrade's deductions about Kidney as the prince's assistant. Nevertheless, Aberline insists the special branch eliminates eyewitnesses to protect the prince's affair and legitimate child, a royal heir. Concurrently, Liz recognizes someone from a carriage and accepts the stranger's drink. Worried for Liz, Kate silently leaves their room as Mary sleeps. In a desolate alley, Jack the Ripper follows the unassuming hustler who falls to a puddle due to the drink and grabs her grapes. Suddenly, Liz sees the reflection of the knife and runs for her life. However, Netley stops her from escaping and threatens a passerby. The coachman aids the Ripper's killing and flees as they hear someone approaching. Shortly, Aberline and Godly inspect the unfinished crime, thinking the Ripper will kill again. Afterward, Aberline sees visions of Jack the Ripper with his kit, so he hurries into the streets to catch him. Meanwhile, the infamous killer meets Kate and cuts her throat immediately. Suddenly, the Nichols gang pins the inspector against the wall, and McQueen knocks him unconscious. Moments later, Aberline awakens from a commotion about another victim and sees Kate's disemboweled corpse. On the wall written in chalk, Jack points the blame to Jewish people. Soon after, Charles Warren arrives and orders to clean the evidence to minimize an uproar and protect the Jewish community. Bewildered, Aberline insists an educated man wrote the message. Regardless, the bureaucrat orders the sergeant to wash the writings and suspends the inspector for his inefficiency. The following day, Aberline leaves a letter to the barkeep for Mary. After packing, the inspector returns to his addiction when he sees visions of Jack the Ripper killing his beloved Mary. Additionally, he sees the bureaucrat's face with the former grenadier guards, hinting about the fraternity's ritual. Soon, Mary receives Aberline's letter. Unaware, Netley follows her. Instead of a note, Mary finds money inside the envelope, which interests Ada. At the library, the inspector reads about the Freemasons' history and learns that Jewish people killed their founder. As Mary sleeps, Ada returns with food using Mary's money, but the troubled woman warns her of the dangerous streets until she leaves London. Meanwhile, Aberline knocks on William's door, eyeing Kidney outside the building. The inspector confronts the former surgeon about the Freemason symbol of the Pentacle Star, formed on Annie's feet, and the location of the crimes. Furthermore, Aberline reveals that the woman's methodical murders reenacted the founder's death. The inspector accuses the royal physician as Jack the Ripper, who believes the unfortunate woman gave the prince syphilis. Exposed, William reveals his loyalty to the Freemasons and claims to bring meaning to their sacred values. Aberline takes out his gun, but Kidney knocks him unconscious. In a carriage, Farrell is about to inject poison into the subdued inspector when Aberline fights back. He pushes Kidney out the window, eventually overturning the vehicle and killing him. Meanwhile, Netley leads Jack the Ripper into Mary's room while Aberline emerges from the wreckage to rescue his beloved. Sneaking inside, William lights the candles and disembowels the woman on the bed. Acknowledging the notorious human heart, he cuts and throws it into the furnace. Then, the deranged Freemason imagines his brother celebrating his well-found faith. The following day, Aberline rushes to the brutal crime scene of Jack the Ripper's last victim. Finding Mary's place, the inspector pushes his royal superior onto the wall. He throws the Freemason's ring to the ground and furiously vows to end his fraternity. Despite
Despite this, Sir Lauren unsuspends and promotes Aberline, informing the inspector will be watched closely as he leaves with his ring. Devastated, Aberline kneels beside the disfigured corpse when he notices that the body's hair is brown instead of red like Mary's. Realizing that the Ripper mistakes Ada for Mary, Aberline goes to the barkeep, who hands him the woman's letter. Mary reveals she'll claim baby Alice at the orphanage and retreat to her hometown, where she'll await her death. Hopeful, she reiterates her wish for a peaceful life with Aberline and gives her a dress. At the palace, the queen expresses her distress to the Freemason's judge, Lord Halsham, about William's vicious ways of eradicating the throne's threat. Despite the physician's fervent loyalty, Halsham acknowledges William's crimes before the fraternity's court. However, William denigrates his brothers and claims his exceptional devotion to the Masonry's oath. Soon, Dr. Farrell performs his treatment on the deranged patient as Aberline witnesses Jack the Ripper's end. Free from the police's surveillance, the inspector remains cautious while Godly urges him to go to Mary. However, the lonely man insists on ensuring his beloved's safety and burns her letter. Years later, Mary resides with Alice in her hometown by the sea, like what she hoped for her life with Aberline. When Godly fetches his lonely comrade at his den, the sergeant finds the inspector lifeless. Godly places the two coins on Aberline's eyes so he can pay the ferryman to guide his soul. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.